Hi, Scorpio. I made the nose for your reading yesterday and I haven't been able to keep control of my emotions since. Turbulence? Emotional turbulence? Let's get into it. Okay, today is June 4th. Yesterday we had the Parade of Planets. We have Mars moving into Taurus across from you in just a few days. First up, we have the Seven of Cups, the Three of Pentacles, and the Ace of Pentacles. We love that Ace of Pentacles for you. We love that Three of Pentacles for you, but obviously there is something to get past before we can get to that late June financial stability. So right now, if you feel, especially financially, like things are confused, uh, you can't tell the good from the bad, it's very hard to get any real credit for anything. It's hard to give yourself credit for anything as well as other people give you credit. It's difficult to distinguish not just your losses from your wins, but also to distinguish your efforts from being in vain or effective. Like it, it can feel so confusing to think to yourself, am I running in place or am I actually getting somewhere? I have no idea, but I am moving. Why am I moving so much if I don't know where I'm going or what's going on? So you are full in a lot of ways, but it could be one specific thing having to do with work that has set this off or your emotions are now creating situations at work because with you, cause and effect is so dreamily different for Scorpios. Something is making you feel, it's not something, it's Mars moving into Taurus soon. It's making you feel so charged and so electric with your emotions that it can feel almost contradictory, right? So for Scorpio rising on the ninth, Taurus moves into your seventh house. And when it does so, it immediately starts to create these super tense squares with Pluto. So for you as a fixed sign, this can get really, really tense. And again, the feelings are very contradictory. You feel like it, you're at odds with yourself. Things get so complicated. Um, even situations in love that are supposed to be really simple feel very complicated. And this doesn't just apply to your romantic relationships. This is just relationships in general. You can feel so confused. And it's such a rare place for you to be in because you can clock things so quickly. You clock people, you clock the plot. You know, you be knowing. But when you're confused like this, it's like, you know what this is? This is, everything is gonna be fine. You're gonna be great. End of June is gonna be really good. Water season, come on, you're parched. You need some water. It's been way too long since we had some water. Like, it's just really time. Perfect, hurricane season's coming. We need the water, okay? This is most of the month until we get to the sun moving into Cancer. Your intuition is off. You know how once a year we have to have this talk where like there's a little bit of time every year where your intuition just goes, okay, bye. And I don't think you realize it until that button is pressed and that, that superpower turns off how much you rely on it in your day to day. There are people, there are other signs who have this ability, but they don't rely on it the way you rely on it. You, you do everything by this ability, right? So when it's off, your intuition is not working. You may still think that you know what's going on, but you don't. So the best thing that you can do for yourself when you're in a situation where your most powerful ability, the thing that you use to navigate your life is just on vacation, it's, re, it's downloading updates, whatever you want to call it, is to rely on the people around you that are extremely stable and people you have in your life specifically because you trust their business acumen, you trust how they deal with other people in their life, you, you find these people to be very respectable and solid and you have a lot of respect for them. So when you can admit to yourself, whenever you get there in June, probably around the 9th, 
where you are where I am now, where I'm like, why the fuck have I been crying all day? What is going on? Your energy is so heavy, it's so strong, it's so confused, it's so contradictory. Like anyone who comes near it is feeling the way I feel. I made these notes yesterday and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I made the notes and I had every intention of doing like a fireplace evening video for you guys. And as soon as I got done doing the notes, I just felt so emotional and I haven't been able to kick it since. I mean, listen, the emotions really helped me. I had a few talks that I really absolutely needed to have. And please do not think it's lost on me that every one of those conversations had a very Scorpio edge. And what do I mean by Scorpio edge? I mean, your the way you communicate is so real. And you try to communicate past your wounds and past other people's wounds. You try to have conversations and you try to communicate ideas without getting stuck in the muck because you are the muck. You know where the muck is. You are the bog that everything can get stuck in. So like you have learned how to communicate in a way that may seem to, to, to a straighter edge, like a, like a Sagittarius, it may seem like it's like you're circumventing something you're not. It's a way to talk where you leave all your pain and your wounding behind and you can actually get to the point of things. And sometimes w the way that translates to the person you're speaking to, if you don't go out of your way to be really sugary and nice, is that they feel you have hit them right in their weakest spot. But it's not because you're trying to hit them in their weakest spot. You're just trying to get around all the bullshit that people do to hide what's hurting them. It's like you can just see it and you're like, I don't want to talk about that. 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 You're doing a good enough job, you know, ignoring that shit all on your own. I don't need to bring any of that up. How, how about we just talk about this? And when you're direct this way, usually the person who has all these facades going and all these balls up in there, because that's how they lie to themselves. That's how they keep themselves from being introspective. They're just flabbergasted how you didn't fall for any of those different distractions and you came straight for them. But you're not trying to come. My mom called. She wanted to talk about herself <clears throat> for a little while. I think she's happier now. Okay. All right. Complicated situations in love and family. How come your family and your loved ones don't approve of what's going on and what you're doing? What is it that they don't approve of exactly? Why do you feel so left out? Well, part of it is astrological. I think it's also... There's such a, like funny kind of spirit that you have in you where I think you also kind of create these situations because you really like change but you're a thick sign and you're really stubborn so you don't love change but you still like it and it's it's like getting a tattoo it like hurts but you like it um so actually I think this is why Gemini's and Scorpios can actually fuck with each other so heavy is because you, you you can fuck with change you actually fuck with very 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 deep change Right? So on the surface, you could be very fixed, very rigid, but the death card is deep, deep, deep fundamental change. So you're craving, you know, sure, on one level, surface, su you know, superficial level of viewing what's going on in your life, you may feel like, oh, people don't approve. People are, you know, giving me so much pushback. The people who are supposed to be my support system, people I love are the ones who are upsetting me. Why, why is this happening? I am confusion. My son and I actually have a song from the first time I got a Mac computer like years ago when he was like two years old or something. And we made a song called Apple Confusion because we were trying to figure out how to work the program, but it was recording the whole time and we were fucking with the music and the band. It's called Apple Confusion. And it's so good. Anyway, you are confusion. But really, are you? Are you really confusion? 
because I think you crave change quite often. And I think part of the way that you create that change um, is like you, you develop this awareness that you're ready for change, but you're too fixed to like do anything about it. So your energy starts to create these <laughs> strange situations between you and your loved ones that will prompt this change to happen. Does that make sense? But it's lucky. It's good. It may, again, it may be uncomfortable. It may hurt a little, but it's, it's good. Especially in the romance sector. You may feel like things have gotten arduous. You, uh, whether you're single or not, whether you're single or attached, you may feel like things have become arduous in this area of your life. Now, let me explain to you why all of these wonderful feelings, this very hectic, confusing mix that's like money and luck and connection and sadness and confusion, all of this, why, why does it happen this way? Why does June play out this way? Well, it's very simple. Between the third and the 17th, we have Mercury in Gemini. Until the 17th of June, we have Venus in Gemini. Until the 20th of June, we have the Sun in Gemini. And until June 2025, we have Jupiter in Gemini. So what this is going to do is that all of that is going to square Saturn and square Neptune. When these planets square Saturn, that's a stress test. The stability of everything is tested. So that means everything shakes. Right now, you're in the shaking already. Right now, first card out, first card out. I am apple confusion. I don't know why I feel the way I feel. I can't stop feeling it. Like I know what I feel, but I can't explain this. Why, why, why is all this happening? All those planets in Gemini, squaring Saturn. Stress test. Can you take all this luck and all this change that's coming for you, that's written for you? Can you? Let's get your body in order. Let's get your psyche up for this. The stability of your romantic connections is also tested by Saturn. Saturn says, do you have what it takes to make it this far? Will you be commissioning pizza, pieces of art together after you've been married for 20 years and having like a grand time at some artist studio? Do you have that kind of staying power in your relationship? So that's fun, getting the fundamentals of your relationship tested to that degree. Are you really serious or just kind of serious? Okay, are you devoted? This is another one of the things that Saturn wants to know about because your devotion is not being questioned here, which I would like to point this out. Socially, amongst the peoples, when we are amongst the peoples, Scorpios are seen as so lascivious and, you know, kind of like Lotharios. There is this, let me think of, let me see if I can think of, think of another L word, um, you know, to... And w w such a great contrast to what we see in the readings and what we energetically get off of Scorpios, which is like deep, deep devotion. <laughs> Your devotion is not being tested. Saturn is not worried about how you feel. Saturn knows how you feel. But these other people, well, how do they feel? I want to open this. Wait, hold on one second. I just want to open a window. So, devotion is also tested, but your devotion to each other is also tested. Whether you're in a situation ship or relationship, you have a deep, deep crush, you're trying to forget someone. Devotion, therefore tears, therefore confusion. Saturn is like, what's really going on here? My brothers, when they want to really annoy me, they'll grab me like this, like, like, when the way you grab a cat from like the scruff of it and they'll be like, what are you doing? You know, it just is like a joke. And I'm like, ah, that's, that's what Saturn's doing. They're Capricorns. Saturn energy to be like, what are you doing? 
that's what's happening to you. And you're like, aha. And Gemini is like right there, all the planets in Gemini right there to give all your fucking secrets away and be like, oh, you know what? They've been feeling like this. They've been worried about this. They've been like, you're crying in public. You're fucking, you're fighting with people. Like it's coming out. It's coming out. It's not pleasant. Now, what is Neptune going to do when these same planets square Neptune? Then what happens? We're going to do this and then we're going to do everything else in the extended because we are not even on page three of the notes. And I tried to be very, you know, there, there, there was brevity in these notes, but no, there's still so much to get through. Seven of pentacles, five of swords and the strength card. I would like to point out that Leo season is about to be lit because this Leo season, this Leo card has come out in every reading I've done so far. So what does Neptune bring us when it's square? I know I'm being annoying. I'm being annoying on purpose. I'm being annoying in a way that I can only be annoying with you guys. Please, oh. I have this thing where I'm putting an O after everything because I think it's funny. But my favorite one so far, like I'll be like, oh, do you want to take a napo? Or like, did you have a snacko? I don't know what's why I'm doing it. I do these things. But my favorite <clears throat> is pleaso. Because to me, it sounds like Japanese. Pleaso. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's so funny to me. I'm so sorry. My, I'm telling you, since I made these notes, my emotions have been all over the place. Okay, what's Neptune going to do? The Neptune square energy is all about illusions and how we come on with it lie to ourselves illusions confusions lying to yourself idealism excessive misunderstandings and you put so much work into building this bullshit facade and look at what's happening that sounded dumb personal it didn't mean to be i didn't mean it to be but it did i heard it i heard it myself i heard it i heard it anyone who's an actor who's watching is like i heard that <laughs> like, yes that i'm just but i'm but what i'm saying is true so it doesn't matter the truth is creeping into the light okay Now, here's the real rub, and I would like to do this in the extended... Okay, okay, we'll do it in the extended preview. That's why I can talk to you with the cards in front of me, because this is the thing I want to talk to you about before we go. Everything that you find out right now, everything that these squares tell you, how come you already knew? How come this seven of cups at the beginning, how come us right now being like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why I feel the way I feel. No, you know exactly why you feel the way you feel. You know exactly what's going to happen if such and such situation is stress tested. You know exactly who can measure up and who doesn't. You always knew the limitations of the people you were dealing with. You always knew. None of the, none of the limitations of the people in your life, your partnerships, your romantic partners, your families, your friendships, none of their limitations and how they're being exposed to now are new to you. None of these levels that you're reading is making you like oh, gasp and clutch your pearls. No, no, no. But, and yet you are confused. No, you're not. We may be acting confused, but I think the word we're looking for is disappointed. Let's look at these cards so we can talk about it more. I love you. Uh, in the extended past the preview where we're going to talk more about this and sabotaging yourself. That's what the preview is about. In the extended, we're going to talk about career and money and how these squares, and we'll go through how each of these squares affects career and money. And we're going to talk about Mercury in the eighth house in that Gemini issue area. Then we're going to talk about what happens with finances after the 26th. Then we're going to talk about mental health. And then we're going to talk about physical health. And then we're going to talk about what happens just in general, in cancer season. So late June. Okay, that's in the extended. I'll see you in the preview right now. I love you. Mwah. I think this is good for me. I feel like I'm going to be less emotional now. Hi, Scorpio. Welcome to my kitchen counter. Okay. 
let's talk about limitations. <laughs> One of the unfortunate, and welcome to all those watching the preview after the general. Hi, this is what we do in the extended. One of the themes of this month but I think it extends to most of the summer, unfortunately, is disillusionment. But for most of you, that truth that's creeping into the light, you may feign surprise, but you're not surprised. I think you're keenly aware of people's limitations, especially people you're intimately involved with. I think you're very good at judging people's value, actually. Like I said before, you can get right to the heart of things. So, whether your partner is, was, used to be a Gemini or not, you have a very clear read on their value. For a lot of you, you know that they have a lot of value. And for some of you, Perhaps maybe because you're seeing yourself more and more clearly. Not that it's a competition. More like a battle. But they don't seem to be measuring up. On your side of things, you see so much value. And you're wondering to yourself, what did I... Why am I... Why did I do this? Why does this now after the fact, with all these truths coming out, why does this seem like self-sabotage? I knew that this person had limitations. I knew that this situation had limitations. Why did I hide that from myself? And it reveals something much deeper, much more important than any one person in your life, and that is the tendency you have, despite knowing exactly what the fuck is going on, to lie to yourself, to convince yourself. Really, you're very convincing that the thing you see so clearly is not there. And so, yes, you can on a surface level read Scorpio, especially Scorpio Risings, having a time of disillusionment, sure. But... I think that's just not giving you enough credit. I think that your intuition may be very off right now. But it gives you this kind of break where you can be a little bit human and see some very human mistakes that you're making. Because, baby, we, we all lie to ourselves. You aren't privy to the lies you tell yourself most of the time. So welcome. But don't feel bad. Don't be ashamed. Don't beat yourself up about it. We all do it. You know, don't go at yourself for this. This is not, this is not an excuse for you to treat yourself now like you're weak and then inflict on yourself what you inflict on others when you think they're weak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't do that stuff to yourself. Don't be, don't realize what the fuck is up and then turn it on yourself and make it your fault. Okay, so you feigned ignorance. Okay, on some deep level, you lied to yourself about this person or this situation's capabilities. Got it. Cool. That's okay. But... Finding grace in that for yourself and finding some peace in having made some mistakes and now dealing with the consequences or the realities of the things you kept from yourself, it doesn't have to be more than that. It doesn't have to be a time of great persecution of self. It can just be aha moments. It can be a series of epiphanies like, oh, so this is what was really going on. I kind of knew that was coming. Okay, not so surprised about that. All right, you know, you can have a good old time being a know-it-all about this if you want to. Who's going to stop you? 
The point is find a positive way of dealing with the fact that there are so many misunderstandings around you. There's so much confusion. There's so much illusion. I mean, listen, this whole dying to oneself thing is your game. You know, Mars moves into Taurus, which we're about to talk about. Um, and it's your game. You know how to rise from the ashes. This is not you turning to ash and rising. You've, you've, you've done all that. These are different aspects of your life now, falling to ashes and rising back up. And you don't have to play as active in a role in this as you think you do. Just understanding that you don't know everything right now and being more of a more of an observer in your life for the next few months is a really good idea. Because as you know, people just can't wait to tell on themselves in Gemini season. Now there's a lot of positives here. A lot of people you'll realize have way more value perhaps than you were actively letting yourself acknowledge. But there is disappointment here as well. There is deep emotional deep emotion here that has nothing to do with the revelations and the people either. It has to do with you. Mars is working on you as well, just you internally. And it's tumultuous and it's not scary, but it's unnerving. You know, it can make you feel jumpy. Like what are the things that you can do that soothe, that, that give you that feeling of no, everything's still okay. That's what you should focus on as you come to terms with how unsurprised you are at the self-sabotage. <laughs> That's a really long seven minute way of saying you did this to yourself and it's okay. That's all right. <laughs> I love you. That's the preview for you. We're going to move on to career and money and everything else. The links to see the rest of the extended are below. There is a Patreon link and a Patreon standalone video. Just in case you can't subscribe in your country, you can buy it just as a standalone video. There's Vimeo, there's a PayPal link, and there is a link to get a personal reading, which they've become very popular lately. So, Coolio, I will see you later. We're going to go on with the extended.